Hi everyone and welcome to the Bear Necessities. I'm Bear and today we are making a pumpkin maple muffin with a uh, delicious cinnamon cream cheese icing or frosting depending on what you want to call it. I'm not really sure. So to get started with this amazing recipe I'd first like to talk about the maple syrup that I got. Um, one of my closest friends, someone that I actually went to seminary with, yes, I, I went to seminary, um, her tribe makes maple syrup up in Michigan. They are the uh, Little, uh, Little Traverse Bay Band of the Odawa, and they make so many different uh, things. They make maple candies and things too, but this syrup, she gave it to me as a gift last year, and I cannot tell you, the smell is fantastic you can smell the actual fires it's cooked over and it is so dark and so just clean and lovely i'm not a huge maple fan i think i've discussed this before and this maple syrup i would fight someone over it so it's really good um and we are going to be using this maple syrup in our recipe today because i've been saving it for a special occasion and what's more special than a delicious delicious muffin right for your, uh, for your ingredients, first, turn your hot box on to 350 degrees. Then you will need two cups of all-purpose flour, or you can split it, um, one cup of all-purpose and one cup of whole wheat if you have it. I actually don't have any whole wheat right now. Weird. And then you're going to need a cup and a half of a pumpkin puree. This is some of the pumpkin that we roasted many, many video videos ago. Um, or... It's roughly about one can, uh, one 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree, if that's what you have. It works super duper well. There's a reason it's popular, just saying. You will need three eggs. You'll need half a cup of butter that's been browned. In order to brown butter, it's really simple. It's, it takes about five, six minutes. Is uh, put your butter into a pan, put it over a low to medium low heat, just to kind of melt it down then turn it all the way down to low. Stir every now and then, and your butter's gonna start cooking itself. And it'll start darkening a little bit. And all the solids in it are going to separate, and they'll start browning. So you're gonna to want to stir those up so they don't burn, because you don't want burnt butter, you want browned butter. And there's a huge difference in the flavor. Um, after about four minutes or so, you're gonna notice it's gonna start foaming up a lot. That's good you want it to do that. Keep an eye on it, stir it every now and then. After about another minute or so, that foam is going to die down. And at that point, it's pretty much ready. Just make sure you keep stirring every now and then. You don't have to do it constantly. Just to keep the solids off the bottom so they don't completely burn onto the bottom. You want them browned, not burnt, right? And then you're going to just put it off to the side, let it cool for about 10 minutes. You, you can use this while it's warm, but not hot. You don't want it to cook the other ingredients. But to brown butter, your foam is gonna die down just a little bit. You're gonna have just the tiniest level of foam on the top of it, and that's good. You, that's, that's where it needs to be. You're not going to get all of it away. You can scoop that foam off. That's just clarifying it a little bit more, but you want everything that went into that pan to come back out of it because you're going to want all the little cooked bits, all the solids, everything to go into this because they all add flavor in their own ways, excuse me. With that, you also need a cup of packed brown sugar. I didn't have any packed uh, or any uh, brown sugar, or at least not that volume, I had a little bit. And so I took regular sugar and I actually happened to have some molasses. And so I added just a teaspoon or two to, of molasses to that sugar. And I started mashing the molasses in because that's brown sugar is molasses and sugar. You're going to need two thirds of a cup of maple syrup. You can forego this and just use regular sugar, two thirds of a cup, but the maple just gives it that little bit extra oomph that is so delicious. You can also use honey instead or agave. Agave would work really, really well, especially if you have a dark agave syrup. I'm adding about a, a little bit over a quarter of a cup of finely chopped uh, crystallized ginger, just because I like that bite, the chewiness of it, and it gives it a little bit of spiciness that is really warm and delightful. 
we're here in winter in Texas and it's been kind of cool. So having those warm spices is always lovely. Um, you're going to need two teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon and a half of salt. And then in here, I have a whole bunch of spices. A lot of them are optional and I'm going to tell you which ones. So in here, I have one tablespoon of ground cinnamon. Yeah, like this is going to be a punch of cinnamon. It's what I want. It's probably what you want. It's that, it's that home flavor. Then I also have one and a half teaspoons of ground ginger. So more ginger in there. I have a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. You can do a little bit more if you want. I think I actually ended up doing it since I, ha I do fresh nutmeg. Um, and then one of the optionals is I have a teaspoon of cardamom in here. It just adds this lovely floral aroma to it, as well as uh, two teaspoons of grains of paradise ground up. Again, super optional because I know it's hard to find and they're kind of expensive if you don't get them on sale like I did. So don't worry about it. These are options. Um, I have an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves. You can just do a pinch, not even clove. It's so powerful of flavor. You don't want to overdo it because it can numb your mouth. Um, not even a joke. And then I have a quarter teaspoon of allspice. Uh, so just ground allspice. I'm checking my recipe over to the side just to make sure. And then finally, you're going to need a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more of vanilla. So let's get started putting these together. In your mixing bowl, go ahead and add your pumpkin puree. Yours um, will probably be a little thicker, especially if you're using the uh, canned puree. I didn't cook the water out of this because it's fine with me. I can have it a little bit thinner. It helps my batter stay a little bit thinner, which makes it easier for me to level. So helpful hint, but not required in any way at all. So pumpkin. And into the pumpkin, I'm gonna go ahead and add my browned butter. And if you look, that's all the solids in the bottom of this bowl from the butter itself. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape all those out because again, I want them. They lend a, it's actually sweet, almost sugary sweet, uh, caramelly nuttiness that is, it can't be beat and you can't fake it. And you just, you can't. Brown butter gives life to baked goods in a way that a lot of other ingredients don't and can't. All right, so let's get that mixed in just a little bit just to make sure it's slightly cooled off so it doesn't cook everything else. I'm gonna put you off to the side for a second. And we are going to pull our eggs to the side, add our sugar. And remember this is one cup of packed brown sugar, but I am using a sugar substitute, uh, just reducing it as much as I can. I'm not demonizing sugar here. It's just, it doesn't work for my system. Um, if you are new here, which I, I don't think many of you are at this point, but if you're new here, I, uh, I am a bariatric patient. So I have to be real careful with the amount of fat and the amount of sugar that goes into my stomach because my body does not enjoy either one of them, nor does my waistline. So into our butter and pumpkin and sugar, which, oh my goodness, it is just delightful and gorgeous already. We're gonna go ahead and add our maple. So again, this is two thirds of a cup of maple and you can use other uh, sweet syrups like a dark agave or even, um, I believe it's rice syrup. You can also use uh, coconut, uh, coconut sugar syrup and then honey works really, really well. But you want that very, you want the syrupy sweet. You can use two thirds of a cup of sugar for this. You'll get, you'll get the same level of sweetness, but you won't, it, it's a flavor profile. 
that you're just that you're looking for at this point. We're going to add our eggs. Get them out of my bowl. Because no shells. We don't want shell. And again, this is three eggs. And you can use the equivalent egg white. Or if you're uh, if you're a vegan or have an egg allergy, uh, use the equivalent of an egg substitute, um, including applesauce. If you want, applesauce works really well as your as your uh, makeup for this. And then we're just going to get the eggs mixed in as well as possible. We really want the albumin broken up into this. And that, of course, is the egg white. There we go. Makes it a little bit cloudy and milky, and that's when you know it's kind of broken up well. Now we're going to add our spices and our salt. And just get that mixed well enough that it's incorporated, but it doesn't have to be perfect yet because we will still be working with it. We'll add our ginger. If you're gonna do crystallized ginger, it's completely optional. Again, I just really enjoy the texture and the flavor. And I like the added ginger, the added spice that comes with it. And now into my flour, I'm gonna add my baking powder and baking soda. And just give that a little bit of a stir. Julia Child always taught that a chef's best tools are found at the ends of their arms. She was not wrong. Don't be afraid to use your hands on things. Even if you're wearing a shirt that probably shouldn't be around flour in any way. <laughs> so look at me, messy as can be. All right, so we're gonna add about half of our flour just to get it started in. All right, and add the rest of it. I've got dishes to do. All right, and we're just going to get this all mixed together for a moment. Cannot forget the vanilla. Remember I said it's about a, t a teaspoon. You can measure it out or guesstimate. It will not hurt you. And while you want everything incorporated, you don't want it over mixed. So the moment you notice that there's no real raw flour showing up and no really big chunks, that's when you're ready. So we have our batter. Oh, that's delightful. Oh, the brown butter. Now in here, I have cupcake liners in my cupcake tin. You can also do this as a bunt cake if you want. It works really well that way. Just know that your cooking time is going to be a little bit different. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get this scooped in. Um, you want them about two thirds of the way full, as always with any cupcake or muffin. And then I'm gonna see you back in a second. All right, so I have these scooped up. I still have enough for about another dozen. Um, I'm going to actually put that into a, like my little mini bunt pan that we've seen before, just to kind of give us something else to work with. And I'm going to get these into my 350 degree oven and bake them for about 20 to 25 minutes. 
So I will see you back when these come up springy and a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. See you soon. All right, y'all, so while we're waiting on the pumpkin muffins to be finished in the oven, uh, they still have a few minutes, let's go ahead and make the icing or frosting that's gonna go with them. So what I have here are two eight ounce packages of cream cheese. Um, these are fat-free cream cheese. You can use regular whole fat. It'll taste a heck of a lot better, I'm sure. But I'm using what I can and you should too. So let's get these open. Of course you did. This one's being a brat. I should have opened these beforehand, but you know me. <laughs> Just flying off the cuff here. All right, so now, heat's sake, y'all. Okay, there we go. Cream cheese packaging over to the side and let's just get that broken up ever so slightly. And the reason I also wanted to do the fat free, at least for me, is because we are going to be adding a little bit of fat to this. So I didn't wanna go overkill. This uh, cream cheese is also extremely room temperature. So I let it sit out overnight to make sure it was absolutely soft. And uh, if you do not have super soft cream cheese, you can uh, put it in a bowl, pop it in the microwave for just, you know, maybe 13, 14 seconds, not very long. And that'll soften it right up without being too much. And just as you stir, the heat will distribute and it'll become even. I've also added a quarter cup of butter and we need to get those two mixed together. And of course that butter was also room temperature. All right, and now that we have those mixed together, I'm going to add a decent pinch of salt and a heavy teaspoon, so about a teaspoon and a half of vanilla, because this was a cinnamon cream cheese frosting. So let's add in, it's not gonna take much for these, about a teaspoon. I'm just eyeing everything because why not? If you want to measure, please measure. And finally, as much as I cut sugar out of my diet, unfortunately, one of the things we can't avoid, I'm gonna need a smaller scoop, is using powdered sugar here. I haven't found a satisfactory substitute yet for powdered sugar. I am still looking, um, trying different recipes and things on my own. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna have to use regular and have it in moderation, of course. And I'm going to be adding four cups of powdered sugar to this. Yeah, this is, yeah. So we're going to very, very carefully get that all mixed together. And part of this recipe calls for milk. Um, we're going to see if we need it. Because uh, fat-free cream cheese, at least for me, the fat-free cream cheese doesn't always need additional liquid. Get nice, thick cream cheese for the tops of our muffins. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover this uh, and put it in the fridge for it to just sit because the muffins are gonna have to cool for a while too. Um, but I'm gonna get this cooled and I will see you back in just a few seconds. Okay, y'all, we are back. Everything has finished baking and has cooled to room temperature. There's not even the slightest bit of warmth. I ended up making the little bunts like I talked about, so adorable little bunts. And then our muffins turned out lovely and smell absolutely amazing. The whole house just smells so good. And um, after I made the icing, I didn't quite like the texture of it. 
Um, so I went ahead and I whipped it on my stand mixer just to kind of give it a little bit of lightness because while it would have been nice and it would have been very luscious on top, I kind of wanted something that would actually be a little bit lighter and not as heavy. So I whipped it up, it kind of doubled in volume and then I let it cool uh, completely uh, because cream cheese icing often needs to be chilled down just a little bit to help it set up initially especially if it doesn't have any stabilizers in it. And this doesn't really have any stabilizers in it. There's a little bit in the powdered sugar, but that's about it. So let's get a piping bag. And yes, y'all, you are seeing something that you will rarely ever see. I have a piping bag with a star tip on it. I almost never pipe, as many of you know, but I wanted to try with this icing. It may be a little bit too soft still, but we will see. And I'm just going to pipe onto my little bunts, because I have some that are bare sized, basically. And then I'm just going to pipe onto the muffins themselves, just a circle swirl and up. Now you may be asking, well, then what's Bear's big deal about, about uh, piping things? This is super basic piping. This I can do. This is fine. Let's get all the warm out. Uh, more complex piping, way beyond me. Not my thing. I don't do plated desserts for a reason. Just add a little bit more to a few of them. All right. And there we have it. It's spread a little bit. I'm going to have to get this back into the fridge just to let it finish setting up completely, um, which is good with me. Uh, cream cheese frosting, unless it has serious stabilizers or gelatin or something in it, will often need to stay chilled long enough to really set. And then in a cool place. And right now my kitchen is a little bit on the warm side. Can't imagine why. But here we go. Let's have a little taste. Mm. Oh my God. Okay. So after I'm done with this, I'll be eating every last one of these. It'll be worth it. It won't. First, first thing that I tasted was the browned butter. Oh my gosh, it gives this light, nutty sweetness that I had talked about earlier. And you can just taste how the butter has kind of transformed. That little extra bit of salt that we added in, because one and a half teaspoons. And then the ginger, I got a little bit of the can and the crystallized ginger in there. So that bite into it as well. The texture is amazing. The amount of spices is good. The pumpkin comes through nice and fresh. The cake itself, absolutely delightful. And the icing that has mostly stopped melting. <laughs> Whatever y'all, it's icing. It doesn't have to be pretty. It has to be delicious. But the icing has that hint of cinnamon to it, just the, the that little bit of cinnamon in it, a little vanilla, that sprinkle of salt, all of it comes together and it's just this light, soft, sweet, very sweet icing. I love it. I'm happy with this. So I hope you enjoy making this recipe as much as I always do. A um, few helpful hints, go ahead and use full fat cream cheese if you can handle the fat. Um, Fat-free cream cheese is a lot of stabilizers and things, so you're going to have to add something else sometimes, sometimes, uh, to help it uh, thicken up or really hold on, or you're going to have to whip the living bejeebers out of it to make sure that it holds up. So there's that. But make these yours. Try different spices. Try maybe a kick of cayenne or something to really kind of round that out. Add, and try doing a caramel icing on it instead or maybe add some tea to it like it's some concentrated tea to your to your muffins 
do something like that, make a chai pumpkin muffin, right? Delicious. But enjoy it. Make it yours as always, because the kitchen is your play place. And as long as you're safe, and as long as you're not playing with the oven, why not have fun with it? It's food. There should be pleasure there. Food is fuel, yes. But that fuel should at least really get you going, right? So until I see you again. Hey, y'all. So um, let me grab one of these. So the cupcakes turned out really well in the end. Um, we only have a couple of them left, uh, like nine of the 12 cupcakes. But then also um, all the little bunts are gone. So, you know, that. However, the icing, if you see it, uh, did set up really, 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 really well. Like it's, it's, it's like it should be. It's the nice little icing shell. So just let it sit. It still has a little swirl and everything that I put in there. It did melt a little bit while they were on. It, they might've actually still been slightly too warm. I don't know, but I know that with time it's set up and that's what matters. So be patient, be patient with them. I really do hope you enjoy making these recipes. I don't just say those as empty words. I really do hope you enjoy making my recipes when I post them. I find so much joy and passion in them. And I hope I'm passing on at least some of that to you. It's, it's one of my love languages. And one of the best things my grandmother ever taught me is kind of a, it, it's, it's well used. <laughs> A little bit cliche, but it was something along the lines of, if you have plenty, don't build a high fence. Build a longer table. Share what you have. Share what's your passion. Share what makes you happy. Because there will be somebody somewhere yeah. that needs that happiness too. And if you can teach them where to find it in themselves, all the better. So I hope you all have a good one. I will talk to you later. And until I see you again... Of course, as always, bye. Bye.